you arrived last year and you got into the rotation right away. You played all 13 games, started six of them. A lot of times freshmen talk about what a huge leap it is from high school to college. What was the biggest adjustment for you and how were you able to adjust so quickly? Uh, the biggest adjustment for me was uh, just the size of the players. Um, instead of going from like 5'8", five, 5'10", five, guys, you guys 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, bigger than you. Um, so yeah, that's probably the biggest adjustment. Uh, just getting in the weight room, that, uh, that helps a lot. And uh, just technique stuff, uh, it helps a lot with bigger guys. All right, in addition to your, your talent on the field and your athletic ability, you do obviously have one advantage that none of your teammates have, and that is your dad was a college football star. He was the number one dra pick in the NFL draft. What did he tell you about making that jump from South Lake Carroll to the college level? Um, well, uh, he, we don't talk too much about football. It's kind of weird. Um, we, we just talk about normal, normal family stuff usually. We don't talk too much about football, but he always tells me, if anything, just stay low when I'm blocking. But that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. Given who he is, I think when you sort of emerged on the recruiting radar, a lot of people assumed you might follow your dad to Miami. You initially committed to Boston College, then when you decommitted, maybe more people thought you'd go to Miami, and you ended up in Dallas. Why did you end up here? What made you decide that Hilltop is where you wanted to be? Um, so, so basically, uh, I, I was committed for, to Boston College for almost a year. And uh, I just, I really didn't want to go there. And I was just committed there. Uh, I, I really just didn't know why I committed there in the first place. And so I just decommitted. And then uh, whenever the, whenever I decommitted, I, I was talking to Miami a little bit. And I, I kind of wanted to go there, but uh, it was it was pretty late in the recruiting process. And uh, the coaching, there was a coaching change, obviously. Coach Lashley came here. Uh, and they didn't want me as much, so. I decided to come here. So was Coach Lashley the one who was recruiting you to Miami? Yeah, Coach Lashley was the one who recruited me at Miami. And he, whenever he got here, he offered me again. Was there any effort by your mom to not have you go to Miami where you would be identified as Russell Maryland's son? Uh, no, they, they were pretty much weren't worried all, uh, worried about that. Um, they, were, they were just honestly uh, just wanting me to be anywhere where I'm happy. Has he gotten rid of all his Hurricanes gear? Oh, no, he, st he still has it. He still has it. But uh, he, he got some SMU gear too, so, yeah. All right, when you got here last year, you were one of 10 tight ends on the roster. And obviously, I guess the veteran leader of the group was Ben Redding. Um, but all of you sort of had different roles and different skills. What did you take from Ben that you were able to adapt into your game? Um, just a lot of mental stuff. Uh, just, I've talked to him a lot, uh, just in the hotels, whenever, like, not before games. He was always my roommate. And so... Uh, He's just always a good friend uh, just to talk to, talk about anything, talk about football, just talk about life. And uh, he's just a pretty good mentor for me. One of the guys who played with your dad ended up coming to SMU as a strength coach, Ricky Dudley, who was a tight end with the Raiders. He was a strength coach at SMU for a couple of years with the basketball team. Are they still friends? Did Ricky Dudley ever give you any inside advice on what SMU is like? Uh, yeah, or um, I worked out with his son a little bit. Uh, we we used to throw go throw and catch, do footwork drills, and yeah, they're they're good friends to this day. So yeah, we, uh, we're all we're all friends. Yeah. Your position coach, uh, Casey Woods, is also the offensive coordinator. What's he like as a teacher? Um, he's he's pretty demanding. He's he's a he's a pretty fun guy, but he's uh, demanding, and you want that out of a coach. So he uh, he's always good to be around. A lot of coaches talk about when they have young players who get kicked into the lineup, simplifying things, simplifying the playbook or or responsibilities. Did you get a sense that they simplified things for you last year? And if so, how are they going to expand your role this year? Well, I don't, I really don't think they simplified the playbook for me personally because if, if you simplify the playbook uh, you, it, it just doesn't help the offense in general but coming from South Lake Carroll we, we have a pretty dense playbook uh, Coach Dodge uh, his playbooks it, there's a lot to learn so um, yeah come, come from there I think I, I can really do, uh, do good in any offense How does Coach Woods split his time between 
overall coaching the offense and the schemes and everything, and then getting in the room specifically with you and the other tight ends. How much is he able to break that down? So yeah, we, we have our meetings uh, as a whole group and as an offensive unit, and uh, he he uh, he splits it pretty good. Uh, we'll talk about ball, and then he'll, we'll we'll talk about some life. Uh, we'll t- uh, he'll bring us up to his office, just have one on one conversations, how we're doing. So uh, yeah, he's good. He's good with that. You know, you said when you got here a year ago, you were two hundred five, two ten. Yeah, uh, back in June. And now you're year. close to two thirty. Yeah. Um, what's been the biggest area of focus with the strength and conditioning staff? And have you and they talked about how big they want you to get? Um, maybe ten more pounds. I'm like today I weighed in. I think I was two twenty eight. And uh, so yeah, maybe just keep putting on that weight. Uh, and just all good weight, and don't put on too fast. So uh, just just eat healthy, work out, and I feel I feel really good right now. So yeah. All right. So having just spent months in the weight room, uh, who has impressed you in the weight room as far as getting bigger and stronger, or getting leaner, or getting faster? Who's made a noticeable physical change since the end of last season? Um, Nolan Matthews. He's he's gotten a lot leaner. Uh, he looks pretty good right now, so yeah, he's he's impressed me. And also a, a veteran, Elijah Chapman. He's always in there, just squatting, a, just putting every plate on his on his uh, bar. So yeah, he was already incredibly strong when he got here as a freshman. Yeah. How much more room is there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but he just did every plate. Just I remember I was uh, I was doing bench, and he just said, "I'm I'm gonna have to take a plate," and he just took my plate and he was using his squat, and I was like. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> He's a senior. He gets to make that call, right? Yeah. What about on the field? You've only had was it four or five practices so far in the spring, but when you look across the line of scrimmage at those linebackers and DBs who are chasing you and the other guys around, who's impressed you on the other side of the ball? Um, I'd say uh, Brandon Crossley. He's a he's very good competition. Uh, he's really active. He talks a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun going against him every day. Um, Coach Woods said that when you arrived, obviously you had already established yourself as a very productive receiver in high school. That's why a lot of colleges wanted you. And he said you weren't ready yet to be an every down blocker. And so that's been an area of focus for him. What have you done in the off season to work on that? Um, or who have you worked with to try to ramp up that part of your game? So uh, whenever I first got here, um, I didn't know anything, like the plays, what to block on the plays. And I worked uh, with one of our GAs, Sam Hollander. Uh, he, he basically taught me everything I know. Just, uh, and then after, uh, it was like a good two-week span where he, we would just meet every day and go over uh, plays and stuff. And uh, he taught me everything. And then he taught me all the footwork and technique and just like just little, just like, little twist that I can do just to help me block and uh, yeah a lot of it the credit goes to him. A lot of times whether it's tight ends or offensive linemen or even running backs when they talk about bro- blocking assignments some guys have more trouble with big power powerful pass rushers other guys have more of a challenge against quicker guys what gives you headaches at night thinking about who you got to block? Uh, just uh, the athletes really just any athletic person uh, Cause sometimes, sometimes on the D line, like they'll be big and strong, but like they won't really be good athletes, and they might not have good feet. But like, even if they're not as big, just go, having to go and get a good athlete, uh, that's that's always a challenge for anybody. So yeah. All right. Last year you had 28 receptions for 296 yards and six touchdowns, which is getting to the end zone what once every five catches. Considering that your offensive coordinator is also the tight ends coach, and how excited he was when you and Ben Redding had, was it five, five. touchdowns yeah. again in the big win against Houston? It was five. Shouldn't they be calling more plays for the tight ends this year? I, I think so. I, I, re- I really think it's the year that we just score even more touchdowns. So yeah. Um. Obviously, the season is months away. You've only had a few practices with uh, spring practices. Can you kind of get a sense of how good this offense can be? Yeah, uh, it's it's gonna be good. We got a lot of uh, new faces, a lot of transfers. It, it's looking it's looking really good. All, we got a lot of speed on the team, so yeah. 
All right, you mentioned those new faces. You've got a couple of receivers in from Miami. You've added a couple offensive linemen. You've got a couple of new running backs. Who's jumped out at you uh, among the transfers, among the guys who showed up in January this year? Uh, Keyshawn Smith, he, he's good. He's really good. And uh, probably uh, Rooster, he, he's quick. He's really quick. And he uh, both those guys, they really want it. You can tell they want it, so yeah. Rooster is Jalen Knighton? Yeah, yeah. What's it like going to a different quarterback? I know you obviously you worked out all last year with Preston and with Kevin, and they each got to play a little bit. But for most of the year, you had a 22- or 3-year-old veteran quarterback. From your standpoint as a tight end, does it change anything, having a new guy back there in terms of the way they call plays, the way the ball comes out of their hand, anything like that? Uh, not not really. You just work with them so much. Uh, like it, do, it doesn't matter who's throwing you. That's how much you work with them during practice. Like, Preston, Kevin, Tanner, all, all the quarterbacks, like we just throw and catch with them so much so you get used to you get used to every ball that uh, like each different ball that they throw. All right, you you and your teammates have about a week off now for spring break before you come back and finish spring practice. What do you want to accomplish in the remainder of spring practice? Um, I just wanna get better every day and uh, I just wanna get stronger, get more knowledge of the playbook. Uh, just learn everything I can just to be great in this offense. And then anything different that you add to that over the summer other than running and lifting and catching as many balls as you can? Oh, uh, well, I know that's all that's going to come uh, just with, with, with what I can do. But uh, just get in the weight room and just getting bigger and stronger and faster, that's just what I want to do because I know what I can do on the field is, is already good. All right, so you've put on 20 pounds or whatever it is in the last year, and Coach Wood says you're – getting to be a much better blocker. Are you ready to put your hand down and block your dad? <laughs> Not yet. That's, that's for the left guards and the centers. They, they can take him.